Hi! Welcome to Don's Key Tech. In this video, I will share with you my sensor data sharing setup with ESP Now in MicroPython. I have here my two ESP32s with different component attached to them. Each sensor that I have here is sharing its data with the other ESP32s using ESP Now and MicroPython. For example, this infrared sensor here when triggered will cause this LED to light on and the buzzer to create an alert sound. Let's try. And as you can see, the LED indeed turned on and the buzzer also created a sound. Let's try again. So, as you can see, the buzzer and the LED are triggered also whenever the infrared sensor or alert is triggered. I also have a PIR motion sensor here that will detect for any movement or motion and it will turn on this particular LED. Let's try again. And as you can see, this LED is in, indeed turned on whenever there is movement happening in front of my PIR alert sen sensor. At the same time, I have here a DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor, which is periodically updating this I squared C LCD with its sensor values. So right now it is 31.3 and 82.1. But if I hold it like this, then these values for the humidity or the temperature should change. And as you can see, the temperature and the humidity indeed change. Both of these ESP32s are not connected in any way through the Wi-Fi network and are sending only messages through the ESP Now peer-to-peer -peer network. We can use this particular setup in our home security system or in our weather station IoT projects. To help you understand the message exchange or the setup in this particular project of mine, each sensor is connected to one of our ESP32 through a wired protocol. If a sensor, like a PIR motion or infrared, raises an alert such as a burglar or a tip being detected, then a message is captured by our ESP32. This particular message is then sent through a wireless protocol called ESP Now, and then a particular ESP32 which acts as our receiver listens for messages coming from the sender ESP32, and then capture the message. It then parses the message and control the external components connected to it, like the LED or the buzzer or the I squared C LCD. This is the same scenario with the DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor. The only difference is that it periodically reads the sensor readings without waiting for any sensor events. So, if you want to learn more, then let's start exploring. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is a manufacturer specializing in PCB prototyping, low volume production, and PCB assembly service all under one roof. They provide you with different options on how you, you want your PCB output to be manufactured. Plus, they offer free shipping and are an ISO 9001 certified manufacturer so you are sure about the quality of your product. So, if you want to make a PCB for your electronic project, then PCB Way is a great choice for you. Visit their site at www.pcbway.com. For the wiring and the schematic, then you, we can just follow the following diagrams. So, for the sender where the sensors are connected, such as the IR sensor, 
the DHT and the PIR motion sensor. Then just follow the wiring table here. Just remember to connect the PCC and the ground of each sensor to the B in of the ESP32 and the ground it should be connected also to the ground of the sensors. So that's it for the sender. While for the receiver, I have here the ESP32 and the LED plus the LCD and the buzzer. Just remember to add the current limiting resistor for the LED. And for the LCD, just connect the uh, I2C uh, connection to the I2C setup of your ESP32. And the buzzer, similar also, just connect it to GBIO19. So just follow the wiring table here so that you can recreate the project that I did here. So in order for us to communicate with our components, then we need to install some libraries. For the PIR and the infrared, we don't need any other libraries also, including the DHT as they are built in into the MicroPython. However, for the I2C LCD, we will be using this library. And to install this one, I have used the MP Remote. If you are not familiar on how to use MP Remote, then you can review the first two videos of this series and I have shown there how you, you can use MP Remote in installing this library. So if you now connect to your uh, MicroPython device, then you would see that I have installed AIO ESP now and the LCD I2C in the live folder. So once you have done this, then we are now ready to communicate with our components using MicroPython programs. So I am going to demo to you how you can run the project and some code explanation later also. So I have here my Tony IDE and I, I have configured it to run multiple instances. So right now I have here my two ESP32 and the very first thing that we need to do is to connect. So right now I'm connected to the first one at COM7 and the other one at COM3. So at the right hand side is my receiver. I have opened the receiver and at the uh, left hand side, I have opened the reader. So this is the reader. So this is the reader and this is my receiver. So first thing is we need to run the receiver. So I'm just going to click the run here. And as you can see, it's now soft reboot, which means that it is now waiting for any ESP now messages. Next, I'm going to run the leader by going into this uh, run button. And as you can see, the messages are now coming in. For the PIR motion sensor, is now being triggered. So it's now there, including the DHT sensor. I have here my DHT sensor values being displayed in the LCD. So let's try running the IR and see if the, this LED will turn on including the buzzer. So it means that it is running also. The, the infrared sensor is being triggered so we have no problem. So if we try to look at the program, then you would notice that there are some messages that are being sent here. So for example, the motion detected and the temperature. And the data that, that the ESP now is, is being sending is some sort of a JSON in a JSON format. So I have here uh, humidity, temperature, and the PIR alert detected. So let's try if we could see. So there is an infrared alert detected there also. So which means that our program is running and we can test the message exchange through ESP now between the two ESP32. Now let's try to uh, check the code for you to understand further how this code works. So I'm going to do a demo. So for the sender, the very first thing that we need to do is to import the necessary libraries. And then we need to activate the wireless LAN interface and add the peer. So this is the peer. 
and we need to add the MAC address. And then we have defined several uh, GPIO things here for the uh, PIR motion sensor, the IR or infrared, and the DHT pins. And I have several coroutines here that would read the sensor. So, for example, this is the PIR motion reading. It's just a while loop and it has the async, which is means that this is a coroutine that we will run in the event loop of the asynchronous IO later. And I'm just checking the value of the pin. So, nothing fancy here. And then if we uh, detected that something was moving, then we just send an ESP now ascend with the UJSON that dumps. So the message that I have here, uh, I'm just going to convert it into a string because the ascend is expecting a string or a byte, byte size, byte type. So we need to use UJSON that dumps. And I have here also the DHT temperature. So for the DHT, I'm just going to read the temperature and humidity and send the temperature and humidity data separately in a JSON format also uh, converted into a string. And then the IR data, I'm just checking the value of the IR data. If something is triggered, then we just send an infrared alert detected. And then after which, we just sleep a little bit so that the event loop can run other tasks. Then the last function is just basically running the three functions in our event loop. So the main function is now running using this async IO. So basically that's how easy it is to use the async IO. And we are able to read multiple uh, sensors using our MicroPython code. For the receiver, uh, so let's go into the receiver program. So for the receiver, there's really nothing fancy over here also. So we just imported the necessary modules to drive the LCD and the other pins. And then we also need the, of course, the ESP now. And then we activate the wireless LAN interface here and then the ESP now. And we have created the PIR pin and the LCD. So I have here several utility functions that will trigger the PIR. So if we receive a PIR, we just turn on and turn off the LED. And then a little bit of sleep so that the event loop could schedule another task. And then there is a trigger for the infrared alert. This is where we enable the buzzer for one second. And then there is a, an asynchronous display of temperature and humidity by just using the LCD uh, library. Now, the important coordinate uh, is this wait, wait for message, with, which basically uh, listens for ESP now messages. Then the next thing is to parse the message into a JSON format and then if something is detected like a PIR alert, like this one, or a temperature or humidity, then we trigger the PIR alert. And same also for the infrared, the temperature, and humidity. And then we run the coroutine in, uh, in the event loop using the async IO data. So that's how easy it is to create and send uh, multiple uh, sensor readings coming from our sensors to the other ESP32 using ESP now and MicroPython. So we can apply this in any of our project like uh, a home automation system, a sensor weather station, and other projects that is possible by using this peer-to-peer -peer networking called ESP now. And that's all for this topic or for this video. Uh, the description, the blog, the accompanying blog for this project is in the description of this video, including the code. So you can read the code and the blog uh, after watching this video or if anything that you have missed, so you can check it out. So in this project, we were able to successfully read the sensor readings and then transfer it to another uh, ESP32 through ESP now. I hope you learned something. Happy exploring!